Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Special Edition. My name's Camel, and today we are going to delve into the obscure particulars of the game and run through 10 things that you didn't need to know about Skyrim, but uh, secretly you totally need to know them. Timestamps can be found down in the description if you so wish to use them, and down there you can also find links to my social media and to my other Skyrim Special Edition videos. Be sure to check all of them out, and any video or website I reference throughout the video will also be able to be found down there in the old trustworthy description. And if you do have any interesting facts or pieces of trivia about Skyrim, be sure to let me know about it down in the comments, and I might just get featured in one of these videos. So let's start off swinging big. Have you ever been taking a nice, immersive stroll on your horse and wished there were other modes of transport throughout Skyrim? Well, I've got something for you. How about riding a dragon while riding a horse? That's right, why stop at one mount when you can have two? I will admit, this is pretty hard to get done, but here's what to do. Get on your favorite horse. I've gone with Arvac, and if you've never seen Arvac before, I've got a full guide showing you how to get the spell to summon this awesome horse. Check that out, link down in the description. Now, once you've saddled up and you're ready to steer up trouble, find a dragon resting on a word wall outdoors. What you'll need to do is go full sneak mode on your horse. Now, sneaking on a horse doesn't actually exist, which makes it pretty hard. Take a very slow stroll down the cliffs and jump onto the back of the dragon. The last thing he expected was to be kicked in the back by a horse. Now, it won't be very happy and it will whoo, fly away. Now, what happens once the dragon takes off? It's a bit of a gamble. The physics that are applied to you and your horse, again, bit of a gamble. The dragon hitbox is massive, which means its clipbox is massive, which means you've got a big old standing area on its back. Sometimes you'll stick to the dragon, sometimes you'll go flying in a random direction at full speed, sometimes you'll just get flung straight to the ground. And sometimes you'll bounce off things. And sometimes you'll be stationary in zero G and be able to run around like one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, if you do end up rocketing in a straight line across the wilderness of Skyrim, you will experience a massive lag as there's a lot of stuff rendering beneath you. But this is a very user-friendly way to travel across Skyrim. I mean, we were over there about 20 seconds ago and now we're over here. That's pretty good. And if you have small children, this is perfect for them as well. It's very safe for the whole family. Can't get the kids to school on time? No problem. This method has got your back. In all seriousness, this is almost impossible to pull off. You are almost guaranteed to die or end up off of the map. Your horse will 100% be killed. That's why I went with Arvac because you can just resummon him. And even if you do survive, you'll have one angry dragon to deal with. So riding a dragon while riding a horse, doable, but not practical, but it is pretty cool. Next, we'll be heading to Whiterun, the trusty city that is uh, super easy to get nice cinematic shots in. As soon as you walk in through the front gates over on the right, there is War Maidens, a blacksmithing shop run by Adrienne Avenici and her husband, Ulfberth Warbear. Not many people know this, but Ulfberth Warbear takes his name from the Ulfbert swords which were a high quality brand, in inverted commas, of swords made in Scandinavia during the Viking Age. Swords dating between the 9th and 11th century were found stamped with his name, likely the name of the smith that made them, or the family of smiths that made them, because the guy's probably not 200 years old. So, in an ever-fitting fashion, the smith of Whiterun, Ulfberth, has taken his name from the famous ancient Viking blacksmith, Ulfbert. And if Easter eggs like this tickle your fancy, check out my full Skyrim's Easter egg video. You'll definitely enjoy it and learn something new. Now we'll be headed to Dawnstar, where the wintry grips of the northern shores of Skyrim hold tight and staying warm is a priority. Where better to do so than inside the local inn? Which, as we can see here, the inn in Dawnstar is called the Wind Peak Inn. But if we take a look outside, the wooden sign advertising the Wind Peak Inn says something completely different. The Nightgate Inn. As I'm sure you know, 
All around Skyrim, the various different inns, establishments, shops and stores have different wooden signs out the front, letting you know what that shop is. And while I've got some mods to change their look, each place has its own unique sign, whether Skyrim is modded or not. Except for, of course, the Wind Peak Inn, and before you ask, no. It's not mods doing this. Vanilla Skyrim has got the same issue. Now the Nightgate Inn does have the right sign, which is its sign. And it can be found out in the middle of nowhere in the frozen heart of the Pale. And just as a side note, it's also the home of Full Thyme, who I do have a full video on as he might be one of the last surviving blades in hiding. But back to Wind Peak Inn, I'm not sure why it's got the wrong sign, and so far I've never found a patch or a mod that fixes this. Quite simply, it just looks like no one's been assigned to the task. Next, we'll be making our way to the Emperor's ship, the Kataraya which we will get to board during the Dark Brotherhood quest, Hail Sithis. The purpose of this visit is, of course, to kill the Emperor Titus Me II, but did you know that there is actually another assassin already on the ship? In one of the crew's quarters, there is a sailor sitting, but if we take another look around, we'll see there is actually a dead Penitus Oculatus agent lying on the bed, and there is another sailor dead and stuffed under the bed like a Pokemon card collection. You will know that there is no blood though, so it would seem that this guy is actually an assassin here to kill the Emperor as well, and is posing as one of the sailors on the ship. There is also an alchemy table in the corner, so this guy could have easily cooked up a poison to kill them, and we'll see there is also an invisibility potion on the crate, which may have been how he snuck in here to kill the Emperor. It's very likely that Bethesda placed this guy here, so that even if the player does not choose to kill the Emperor or participate in the Dark Brotherhood questline at all, that in the canon lore of the Elder Scrolls for later games, it will be considered canon that the Emperor was assassinated. And if the idea of the Emperor planning his own assassination sounds cool to you, be sure to check out my full video on that. It's really cool and it's a plausible theory. Next, we'll be kicking back in the warm hot springs of Eastmarch, as here we can find a group of three hunters who have taken a break from the hunt and have decided to strip down and have a bath in the warm waters created by the volcanic activity underneath the lowlands of Eastmarch. They've got their shoes off and drying next to the fire, an array of drink and food and the world's most well-balanced sword. We've got this guy just staring straight ahead, I can't imagine why. We've got this lady just chilling, and then, oh, save yourselves, boys. Check out those arms. Oh, God, that animation is so good. It looks like she has anorexia of the shoulder. It's like the link between two sausages. I got one question. What happened to the armpit animation team at BGS? I mean, at least she's pushing on despite her crippling disease. She's still enjoying the warmth. So, if you ever need to kick back and warm up and take a break from the cold climate and rugged dating scene of Skyrim, get down to the Hunter's Hot Spring. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Khajiit, but more specifically how they punch or don't punch. In my recent race versus race video, the Khajiit came in hot second as the most favoured race to play in Skyrim. One of the reasons for this is that they get a boost to their unarmed damage, making way for a very fun and unique playstyle, the One Punch Kitty Cats. But did you know that the Khajiit don't actually punch during unarmed combat? Instead, as they swing, they'll stretch out their claws and slash at the enemy. This is where their boost to unarmed damage comes from, their claws, as getting slashed across the face by a giant cat claw is much worse than copying a good old 1-2 to the chin. I think it's really cool that Bethesda make unique animations like this, while people do like to pick apart their games for better or worse, knowing that they go out of their way to make cool, unique animations like this is comforting. So next time you think a Khajiit is going in for a high five, just double check. Now we'll take a look at a special little something. If you sided with the Stormcloaks during Skyrim Civil War questline, when you assault Fort Sunguard or Fort Snowhawk, if you're quick, you can see an Imperial soldier stand and blow through an Imperial Warhorn, which sounds like this. Now if you kill this guy, the horn will not be in his inventory. So while the horn is only seen twice in the game, you can't actually get it. 
The only person that gets to go hands on with it is Hornboy of the Imperial Legion, a very respected rank. Well, actually, in the Dragonborn DLC, we can find one. Up on the northern tip of Solstein, there is a Reekling cave known as Frossel. In here, tucked away in a corner, there is a Reekling guarding his most prized possessions, one of which is nothing other than the Imperial Warhorn. But this one can be picked up. It's got a weight of 5 and a value of 70, and many uses. You can shove it up General Tullius. You can give it to Heimskar, so he can tell the truth louder. We are the children of man. Talos is the true god of man. Or you can just stick it on a shelf with the rest of your ornaments. Now we've all been there at the end of a Dwemer dungeon when suddenly we've picked up all the loot and we can't move because we're over encumbered. Well, I'll show you a little trick you can perform with your follower which will allow you to transport an infinite amount of stuff. So you'll need your favourite follower. I'm going to go with Lydia for this one. Lydia, I need to trade some things with you. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Now when we dump loads onto our followers, eventually their inventory carrying capacity will reach maximum and we can't give them any more stuff. Well, here's what to do. You have to drop everything that you want carried out onto the ground. So go to your inventory and individually drop the stuff. And if it's in a stack, you have to make sure to drop them separately, otherwise the stack will be considered as a single unit when picked up. This might take a minute, but it saves so much time when compared to running back and forth between the same dungeon to get all of the loot out. So once you have dropped all of the stuff on the ground, and it's just you, Lydia, and a bunch of items laying everywhere, now it's time. Lydia, I need you to do something. When you do this, the crosshairs will go diagonal, and all you need to do is point it at whatever you want. Lydia to pick up. So start selecting everything on the ground and Lydia or whoever your follower is will start picking up these things. Soon enough, the room will be clean, you'll be nice and light, and if you check Lydia's inventory, sure enough, she has all of the stuff that was on the ground. So you can now loot everything in a dungeon and get out in one trip with this simple trick. Now there is another element to this where you can duplicate items, but I do have a full guide on that, so if you are interested, be sure to check out that video. But for now, stroll back to town, nice and light, and take all of the loot from a dungeon with you. Now this next one, it's a tad strange. It's in Windhelm, the great northern city built by the Atmorans of old. Well, down by the beautiful docks, well, kind of near the docks, kind of in between the docks and the bridge leading to the city's gates, there is a wall that meets a rock, and if we clip through this wall, we will find a door. The secret door of Windhelm. Its purpose, unknown. You can interact with this door and open and close it. While it will not move and you will not be transported anywhere, the game does consider it in two different states, open and closed. But apart from that, this door is a mystery. I do know that Windhelm was meant to have an arena in it at some point, but that was scrapped. Well, this might be a hangover asset from that. Or perhaps there was a quest that got scrapped in which you secretly escaped Windhelm or you secretly got into Windhelm. Whatever reason it's here, leftover assets of scrapped ideas are not a foreign concept when it comes to Skyrim. So whatever the idea was, it seems that they closed the door on it. And finally, we will be taking a closer look at the Dragon Plate Armor, a set I'm sure that we have all at some point crafted for ourselves. The brutal set of heavy armor literally made from the bones of our fallen kin, the Dragons of Skyrim. But did you ever notice that on the armbands, there is the Dragon Language? Now while Dovazul means dragon's voice and refers to the spoken aspect of the dragon language, I'm not sure if the written part is also referred to Dovazul. For the sake of this video, we'll just call it the dragon language. Anyway, if you translate this dragon language on the armbands from Dovazul to English, what it spells out is Jonah Loeb. Well, alright, who's Jonah Loeb? Jonah Loeb is actually one of the concept artists that worked on Skyrim. 
so I'd imagine that he designed this very armor and just to immortalize his place in Skyrim, he branded the Dragonplate armor with his own name. Jonah is actually one of the guys who helped me get to the bottom of the bugs in Giles' mystery. And while he no longer works at Bethesda, he does have a pretty cool Instagram that you can follow. But back to the Dragonbone armor, it's a pretty cool, subtle and smart way to immortalize yourself and your work in Skyrim. So well done. And with that, we have 10 things that you didn't need to know about Skyrim, but secretly you totally need to know them. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Camel. I do hope that you have enjoyed this video and learnt something new about the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and all of the crazy things that can be found within it. If you've watched up until now, I know that you'll be very interested in checking out my other Skyrim Special Edition videos that I've already done. Links to them can be found down in the description. Now down there in the old description, you can also find links to my social media. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and if you would like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can support the channel right here on YouTube. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy, so your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.